All right, you're a talk to talk. Six o'clock show, six o'clock show. You know what it is, man. I'm back, baby. I'm back, baby. I'm back. Look, man, look, man, look, man. Thank y'all for still rocking with me. I love y'all. Thank y'all for being here with me. This is the six o'clock show. You know what I'm saying? So look, we're going to get into this. Um, Pharrell did an interview talking about uh, Drake, and he said some things about the jewelry and all these things. So we're going to talk about that. Before I get into that, got to get my legendary spill. This is Torch Talk. If you like the content, please subscribe. And if you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links on the screen right here. Cash app, PayPal's in the description. They called me the Hidden Gym. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000 and counting. And let me know where you're from. You know what I'm saying? So let's get to it, man. We're going to get right to it, man. We're going to get this thing out the way. And we're going to get right to it. So let's go. All right, so let's get it, man. Fantastic hip hop. You know what it is. Let's go, man. We're going to get to this clip. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. <laughs> now, Drake just can't stay out of controversy recently, as day after day, it seems like between his own declining reputation and status as a rapper, to him and his actions finally being addressed by a lot of big names in hip hop culture. All in all, Drake is finally getting his full reckoning in a lot of ways for not just everything that went down between him and Kendrick Lamar, for all the antics and tricks he tried to pull to take some sort of victory in that beef alone but also for all the other sneak dissing and instigating he has been doing to other artists for the past few years on albums like Her Laws, For All The Dogs, and throughout a ton of his features, and now most recently. Drake's been officially addressed by someone who, while not being directly engaged in conflict with him, still has been one of the most pivotal names in Drake's career in terms of determining where this spiral has been on started and where it's eventually going to end in none other than Pharrell Williams. Now, I will say this about Pharrell, right? Pharrell don't really, he don't really get into a bunch of different things with people. You don't really hear too much about Pharrell. You know what I'm saying? You don't really hear too many things about him when it comes to controversy and all types of things. I mean, at one time, I remember he wore that big ass hat. That was about it. But other than that, you don't really, you don't really see him saying anything or, or doing stuff that people would like, you know, I don't know about this. I mean, he might dress a little, you know, weird, but I guess that's his fashion sense. I don't know. Some people dress weird. You know what I mean? Some people say I dress weird. I don't dress weird, but sometimes I do wear stuff on my head, and that's what the people say. But either way, man, um, Pharrell, I kind of admire Pharrell on, on him being a producer. He always had a different way of going about things. But him and Drake, I just, I never seen that one coming. You know what I'm saying? That him and Drake had a beef, but... Who doesn't Drake have a beef with? You know what I'm saying? And now after years of not just the Kendrick beef, but years of Drake targeting Pharrell because of how bitter he was about the end result of his beef with Pusha T, Drake has finally got what he deserved from Pharrell. But before we get into this, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. It helps me out a ton. And so now with Drake, because Pharrell and Push were such close collaborators and friends, a few years ago it made him figure that he could start something back up or win some sort of ground back in this feud with Push by going after Pharrell, which of course at the core of this mission from Drake, the goal of this was really just to annoy Pharrell until he or Push broke and crashed out on him. And Drake's big attempt at making this happening was when Pharrell was auctioning up his chains for his nonprofit, which is designed to give money to entrepreneurs. Which, when it comes to telling this story, this is a detail that's often lost in all of this situation, but is so important. And as Pharrell put these chains up to help put investment back into other people that would hopefully change their lives, Drake went and bought these chains and then started a two-year campaign where he would pop out wearing them and pretty much try to show the world and prove the point that he conquered Pharrell, Push, and everything they ever stood for. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I think sometimes Drake, he's such a, he's such one of those, he's one of those type of people who do things on purpose just so he can say he did it and, and smile in your face and laugh in your face. It's so, it's so disgusting to see the behavior that Drake does. It really is. And it's just, it's just one of those things where you can't respect it. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people um, say they, they respect it. And I got a video coming up talking about uh, this whole DeMar DeRozan thing again. Um, but it, this is a different take on it. And I think y'all going to uh, appreciate that video. Um, but yeah, man, this guy, he, he's, he is one of those type of people that just 
I feel like he just always in the way. He's always in the way. And even when someone is trying to do something good, he just seems like he has to be the guy in the room that just, I don't know, the, the, the child that pulled the food off the table at Thanksgiving. That, that's, that's strict. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's looking like, damn, who cooked all this food? It's like, that's Drake, man. That's Drake. And with this, we really saw this reach its climax during Drake's Jumbotron poppin' video from the Her Loss era, where he was repping these chains in so many different shots and made distinct points in the video to flash them directly to the camera so everyone knew that these are indeed the real and official pieces of jewelry Pharrell used to rock back in the 2000s. And ultimately, following these subliminals that were pushed through visuals, Drake made the situation even messier when he sent Travis Scott a last minute verse for Utopia for the song Meltdown and straight up dissed Pharrell and Push on this album as he rapped about buying Pharrell's chains and then he made a claim that after showing them off, he didn't just do anything with them, but he melted them down. And as Pharrell was literally a featured producer- See what I mean? Like, stuff like that. I, I, I don't understand you Drake fans, man. I really don't. I don't understand you Drake fans. Y'all just do a lot of corny stuff to me. <laughs> like real corny. I don't understand. I just don't understand how y'all support this guy when y'all know that he just he's just a cornball. Like he's real he's a real live cornball. Like if there was a, a a big piece of corn that was rolled up into a ball that that would be Drake. You know what I'm saying? That would be Drake. He he's a big Corn ball. That's what he is. It's unbelievable. On Travis's Utopia album. This definitely made things complicated, but now fast forward to this year, and all of this came full circle is when Kendrick Lamar released his first full on Drake diss track, Euphoria. He called out Drake for the strange way he has been taunting Pharrell over and over again after his beef with Pusha T, and then pretty much told Drake that he shouldn't come at Pharrell anymore because he is inheriting the beef for him. And now, even with this warning, Drake did not stop taunting Pharrell, as on his supposed to be career ending diss for Kendrick Family Matters, which of course flopped. Drake mentioned him here again and sent out a jab that the entire world was watching to see, which was when Drake told Kendrick that if he wanted to take over the beef for Pharrell, Kendrick would have to go himself and get Pharrell's legacy out of Drake's house. And now while these bars were responding directly to what Kendrick said, in the Family Matters video, we see one of Drake's OVO members rocking the same chains from Pharrell that Drake rocked back in the Jumbotron Poppin' video, and then also with even more chains that belonged to Pharrell on him this time. And this was seemingly another visual jab. It's like, come on, bro. It's like, it's like, I don't know, man. I don't never. I'm not one of those pe people that condone that condone, that condone violence. I really don't. I really don't. And I really don't like to even suggest certain things. But I'll be honest with y'all. You know, I'm not even going to say that. I'm not even going to say that. I'm just going to say he's a cornball. He's a clown. You know what I'm saying? And doing stuff like that, it's just official. He's an official clown. Like, for real. He's, he, he is definitely homie with the clown. Like the homie, the clown. Homie with the clown, and he's homie the clown. He's both. It's unbelievable. That was throwing FRL to try and insult him, his legacy, and push a T while also, of course, insulting Kendrick at the same time. And now, after Pharrell quietly responded to Drake this summer with a song from the Despicable Me 4 soundtrack where he silently just reminded Drake of the fact that despite all of his efforts to try and make him snap, that he is the one sitting back and watching Drake's career now implode because of his own failure throughout his entire beef with Kendrick and through all of the other poor choices he made in his career over the past few years, and now as in this time where everyone was coming at Drake, Pharrell was just too involved with big brand partnerships between his role in doing the soundtrack for Despicable Me 4, doing his own Lego movie about his life, and designing for Louis Vuitton to drag down everything he was working for to get involved in such a messy beef with Drake. Because at the end of the day, when you look at the type of brands that Pharrell was working with, his deals with companies like Lego or Illumination just would have folded because no family brand wants to be anywhere near the types of names that Drake was being called. Now that he has completed all of those quests and he has been named as the designer of the year from GQ, Pharrell's year of just pushing the boundaries for what someone in the hip hop space can do is now officially over. And as Pharrell is wrapping things up right now and recapping his year, he sat down in his interview with GQ and answered some questions about the current state of his career and things going on around his name. Yeah, he got a lot going on, Pharrell. I didn't even know all this stuff. I'm glad I'm watching this because I didn't know that he had all these deals going on. I didn't know they had a Lego movie about his life. That's kind of that's kind of interesting. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that. But um, 
We'll see what happens, man. I mean, it's it, to me, it's kind of like I sit back and I watch Pharrell and I watched him from the clips and I watched how he grew as a producer and then he went into a solo act and him and even with the Neptunes. Like a lot of y'all, man, the Neptunes albums are fire. And I know a lot of y'all probably don't even know. A lot of y'all probably never heard. But go listen to those albums, man. Like, it, it, their albums are fire. You know what I'm saying? But I think that Drake is one of those type of people who like to pick on people who he think that he could beat. You know what I'm saying? In any, type, any capacity. I mean, he comes at everybody, but for the most part, people like Pharrell. He just, Pharrell just looks like he ain't into that type of, that type of behavior. And Drake just feel like he has to be trying to be the biggest guy in the room. He's such a clown. And for the first time, he has finally addressed everything that has been going on between him and Drake. And with the answers he has given, Drake is probably crashing out and fuming hearing this because after an in-depth conversation between Pharrell and GQ, where he is providing such deep answers about all of his interests and creative endeavors, Pharrell got asked, two years ago, you founded an online auction platform. To launch it, you got all of your iconic custom jewelry stuff from let's call it your hubris era out of storage and sold it. Was that stuff weighing on you? Which first off, Pharrell answered to this, I didn't realize, you never realize how much all the stuff you have weighs on you, but it does. You don't know it until you get rid of it. The muscles in my back, now they work without straining. When you let that go, man, you feel so free. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the world, it's still there. And whatever happens to them happens to them. Which first off from this, Pharrell is already showing that he doesn't really care about these chains at all. And then from here, the conversation shifts as the interviewer says, in this case, Drake buys a bunch of it, which then all Pharrell says back is, sure. And then following up on this, the journalist asks, how and when did you find out he was the buyer? And were you like, hmm, is this for? And before the journalist can even finish what he is saying, Pharrell butts in saying no, because I think beyond all of the ongoings, at the heart of it all, he is a fan of music. He is a fan of the history of what it is, and I happen to be a part of that, and those artifacts are a part of it. So pretty much what Pharrell is doing. Man, that was that was a hard, that was a hard, uh, a hard under underhanded slap, Pharrell. I see what you did there. Told him you call him a fan, and he's a fan of music, and basically saying he's a fan of what I do. Cause look, he got what I had. I mean, I know it's a little bit deeper than that, but I mean, come on, bro. That was that was pretty good for real. I had to get. I gotta give you that one. Doing here now is calling Drake a fanboy, and is not even getting into the mud of the issues which is a clear power move on his end to disarm any strength that he had left. And then from here, the interviewer asks again, so when you found out he bought them, you were like, cool? Which then Pharrell simply responds, yeah. And then ultimately the interviewer asks, and then when he was rapping about melting the jewelry down and saying, come get his legacy out my house and all that stuff, how did that strike you? To which Pharrell says, it didn't. And even with him asking this same question again, Pharrell closes off this saying one word, which is no. And so now with all of this, and the fact that after this exchange, Pharrell says that he got rid of those chains in the first place because they had absolutely no value to him anymore. We can see once again that despite years of Drake instigating and trying to make Pharrell snap for the way he just nonstop taunted him for what he thought was owning his legacy, is that Pharrell didn't just care about any of this, but that he is really so above these childish antics at this point in his life. And now for someone of Pharrell's status, Yeah, that's crazy. You basically shut him down by like, eh, no. Like, I, nah, it didn't. None of that bothered me. Nah. It, it just makes him look like he's much more mature than Drake. And we all know Pharrell's much more mature than Drake. And Drake just looks like a child. He really does. And it's so sad to see this almost 40-year-old man still acting like a man-child. It's crazy. Who has shown that he is one of the most professional and respectable people working in the music business today? This makes complete and total sense that Drake flaunting the chains that he got rid of in the first place and Drake saying that he melted them down did not phase him once because to reach the point of success Pharrell is at, he obviously has the maturity and discipline to let things go that in the grand picture of it all, don't really matter or advance his creative goals forward. 
Which also on top of the fact that Drake didn't actually melt Pharrell's chains, this is why in this interview, you can tell that what Pharrell is saying here isn't even him lying, trying to throw off Drake, or just speaking in a manner that's trying to troll him. But he is really just talking his truth here and letting Drake know that all of his disses on him were pathetic, and that for actual grown men who live lives that he is jealous of and who get in rooms that he will never because he lacks the maturity and discipline to, that he is just above all of these antics. And after so long of- I 100% I agree with that. You can't, you, you have to be, people got to understand, there's people with money, then there's people with respect, there's people with power. You don't necessarily have to have a lot of power, but if you have respect, some power comes with that. If you have money, money doesn't necessarily mean you have a lot of power or a lot of respect. You could just have a lot of money. There's a lot of people with money, but you have no power and no respect. I think Pharrell, he has money. He has a lot of respect. I'm not, I don't know how much power he has, but he has a lot of respect. And that respect gets in, it gets him into a lot of rooms that Drake could never get into. Drake could never get into some of these rooms because of his behavior of him being who he is, he don't have a lot of respect when it comes to being a man because people look at him and he, and he's st like, Drake really still believes he's in high school. His mannerisms, when I, when I seen that video of him at the basketball game, he just has a mannerisms of a teenager. He's still doing things that a, a child would do or a young kid would do standing on the sidelines Looking like he mean mugging, like you going to do something to somebody. Just stupid. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Pharrell, I believe he has that respect and that's why he, he gets in those rooms. Drake trying to build this grand moment between him and Pharrell. Having the payoff to it just be Pharrell telling us that he doesn't care about any of it and that he sold these chains for a reason is absolutely hilarious and is really just adding another L to Drake's resume. Because we are seeing another attempt at him instigating and escalating conflict just fall flat on his face and only make him look worse. So all in all, as Drake is being handed yet another L by Pharrell, and joining the likes of someone like Kendrick Lamar just absolutely making him look like a child within a print interview. Which the fact that beyond music now Drake is getting humiliated in magazines is just hilarious. But all in all with this, hopefully Pharrell making Drake look this pathetic in such a professional space finally makes the message reach his head that Drake just has to grow up. And so now with all that said, let me know. What do you think of how Pharrell responded to Drake's years of taunting and do you think this was the best response he could have had? Well, I can't wait to hear what you have to say and while you're at it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And now if you- All right, make sure y'all go follow Fantastic Hip Hop. Yeah, it's crazy how a lot of people sit around and don't really call Drake out on a lot of these things. That's why I'm glad for channels like mine, Fantastic Hip Hop, a bunch of other channels who actually <clears throat> call him out on the things that he do. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's definitely one of those things where people see the behavior of this guy and we call it out because you got to understand as a grown man, when you see a, another grown man who has money moving like he is, uh, uh, how would I say this moving around? Like he's, he's a child. It's kind of upsetting because you say to yourself, you always say to yourself, well, if I had that type of money, would I be doing that? Would I be moving like that? He hasn't changed for years. Drake has not changed. He's been the same type of guy, the same behavior for years. And you get a lot of people who get on here and they say, well, you got to understand the thing about Drake. You know what I'm saying? He, he's a nice guy, though. You know what I'm saying? And nobody actually gives you a legitimate reason of why he still acts like a child. They always talk about how, how, he, how nice he is to them. And it's it's disgusting. It's disgusting to see. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I hate it. I ain't gonna lie, I hate it. I hate it. You know what I'm saying? So either way. But hey man, listen, man, I want I wanna say a couple of things before I get out of here. 
appreciate y'all sticking with me. I know a lot of people, they get upset sometimes with my commentary. And I know I keep saying this, but I got to keep saying it because it's important that y'all know. This channel was built on us to have a constructive dialogue, not a destructive dialogue. If you side with one person or you like another person and I don't like them or I don't side with them, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not telling people that they have to leave the channel. I'm not blocking people. I just want you to understand this is a free channel over here. You can come and go as you please. It's no big deal to me. I want people here who really want to be here, though. Not because you think I'm going to make you feel good. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I'm not going to always agree with certain things y'all say in the comments. Y'all not going to always agree with certain things I say in the commentary. But that's the beauty of it because we're not yes people over here. We have difference of opinion, different values, different views. Sometimes it might clash, but it's never going to clash to the point where we disrespect each other. So I just wanted to put that out there. And I'm going to keep on reminding y'all that this channel is to agree to disagree. Sometimes we agree. Sometimes we agree to disagree. Sometimes we just don't agree. But I still love y'all. Still appreciate y'all for rocking with me. I really do. Still appreciate y'all donating to me. I really do. And I'm going to keep banging this content out. I ain't going to stop. I got a lot of videos dropping. You know what I'm saying? I got some more. I actually got another reaction coming up. That's going to drop tonight. And I got a couple of more videos coming tomorrow. And I'm going to re-release some things because there's a, there's a video that I put out of uh, the 200 uh, list that I want y'all to watch. And I'm re-releasing it. Yes, I'm re-releasing it. So, But listen, man, y'all have yourself a good night. See y'all in the morning. Bye-bye. <laughs>